Dear Mommy, this is your day. We cannot thank you enough for everything you do. You change our diapers. You believe in us and you care for us. You feed us and you care for for us when we're sick. You're always there for us when we need you the most. Most of all, you love us for who we are, even when we're cheeky. <laughs> you have shown us what it means to love God. So today, we celebrate you. We want you to know how thankful we are. We, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. joining us here today. I hope you've had an amazing week. So as we start our service today, please get some free space because we're going to be dancing for the Lord. All right. So with me here today, I have teacher Abedi, aka Chamandazi, and I also have teacher Felix. So teacher Felix is going to come up and help us do the dance. Don't be troubled, for I know my papa's in control. I will have something i hope you had a lot of fun from home we had fun here i really wish i could learn how to dance like chef felix yeah awesome awesome so just as you relax a little bit we're gonna have don't sit down yet don't sit down yet we're going to have a game 
And this game, I'm sure you've played it before. We call it nyama nyama nyama. As you know, nyama means meat. And during this time that we are home, we're eating so many different types of meat. So for this game, what we're gonna do, I'll give different names of different things that we are seeing when we are at home and some meats that we're eating and some veggies. And I'll try and see if you can, and if the people behind me right here can be able to recognize which things I say that are meat. So let's give it a try. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, guys? Awesome, awesome. So let's do this. One, two, three, we go. Nyama, nyama, nyama. Yes. After I say nyama, 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 you have to jump. If it's a type of meat, you jump. If it's not, you say si nyama and you don't jump. All right. Are we ready, guys? Okay. Nyama, nyama, nyama. Nyama, nyama, nyama. Ya kuku. Yambuzi, sanitizer. Did they move? Oh, si nyama. Okay, nyama nyama nyama. Meza. Ah, he almost moved. Okay, nyama nyama nyama. Ya chicken. Yamtu. Si nyama. One last time. Nyama nyama nyama. Ya fish. Omena. Ya table. Sinyama. All right, good job, good job. Clap for yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back like this. Good job, good job, good job. So we're just about to start our Bible lesson for the day. So how about you quickly grab your Bible, get your Bible. I'm counting down five, four, three, two, and one. I hope you're seated. We'll have Pastor Alfreda take us through the lesson if you're between the ages of two to five years. Then we shall have Pastor Kerigo take us through the lessons for the ages between 6 and 11 years. Welcome and have an amazing time as you learn the lesson. Hi boys and girls. How are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. You can give each other an elbow right there at home. And we are excited that today we also get to have church even when we are at home. Last week we learned about we thank God for food and clothing. So today's lesson is about we thank God for family and friends. So we are going to see how Jesus wants us to thank him for family and friends. And do you know what? God has given us everything that we need. He has given us food like we started in our game and some of the foods he's given us and the fruits that are so yummy are like this. Guess what? Which fruits are these? And they really look so yummy. These are mangoes. I know you got it. And they are so yummy. So God has provided us with all the food that we need and all those that we can be able to feel, feed ourselves to become strong. Have you ever been to a supermarket? I know many of you have gone to the supermarket with your mommies and daddies. And right here with me in my basket, I have several things that we buy from the supermarket. And many of them are foods that are stocked in the supermarket that when we eat them, we become strong every day. Can you show the people around you strong, how strong you're becoming? Good job, boys and girls. So what we have here is something that is cooked at home and this is, mm, if you can look at it and gaze it, rice, you got it. And this one, it's something that you also get to cook at, oh, at home and this is uh, green grams, you got it, wonderful. So boys and girls, Jesus told the people long time ago many things about thanking God and one of those was to thank God for all things because he's a good God and we do not need to worry about anything. For example, in the olden time, Jesus told them that they do not need to worry about their clothes that they wear. For example, Solomon wore clothes that were purple, but they looked like flowers, the flowers that grow in the field. And Solomon was looking so decorated as a king. 
So we thank God for the clothes that we wear. During the cold times, what do you get to wear? Mm, think about it. Tell it to your mommy or your little brother or sister, whoever is around you. One of those things that you get to wear is a sweater, a jacket, and maybe a raincoat when it's raining. Wonderful! Clap for yourself, you got it. And when we have the hot, bright sun, we get to also use hearts, the sun hearts. And we wear a bit of light clothes when it's very sunny. So let's thank God for everything that he has given to us. Wonderful boys and girls. I want to teach you a song today that tells us that God is good and we love him and his love never ends. Wonderful. Let's go. This is the song. It's probably a tune that you know. Let's go together. Thank you, God, for food and friends and your love that never ends. Thank you for the clothes we wear and for church where we can share. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. And yes, we love you too. We need to give God a hug for the wonderful things that he's given us. Remember, boys and girls, Jesus cares for us and we do not need to worry about anything. This is the memory verse that we'll, we are learning. It says, Psalms chapter 107 verse 1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love lasts forever. Let's do it again. Psalms chapter 107 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love lasts forever. It's Psalm chapter 107 verse 1. You need to remember this at home. Do not worry about anything. For Jesus said he cares for all of us wonderful boys and girls. So we're just going to pray right now and thank God for family and friends. And if you have your family right there with you, I want you to give them a elbow before we pray. Good job, you did well. So let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you God for everything. Thank you, God, for our family and our friends. Thank you that you care for all of them. And we do not need to worry. We thank you that every day you give us all that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, this is the craft that you get to do while you're at home. You can color it. And mummies and daddies, you can get this craft from the Nairobi Chapel website. You'll download it and get your child to color it and continue to thank God for families and friends. Thank you so much for listening. You've been good. Give yourself a pat on the back. And bye-bye. We'll see you next week. Someone or seven verse Give thanks to the Lord For he is good
Hi, boys and girls. My name is Kirigo, Pastor Kirigo from Nairobi Chapel, Lovington, and I'm excited to have you join me today. So for the last few weeks, we've been learning about the names of God. And today we are also going to learn a new name of God, and this is God the Great I Am. This is the most common name in the Bible. But before we start our story, I want to give a backstory. So the people of God, the Israelites, were slaves in the land of Egypt for many years. And they suffered and they cried out to God and they asked him to save them. God heard their cry and he had a plan to send someone to save them. The years of slavery were so difficult. They were very difficult and they really suffered. However, they grew in number and Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, looked and wondered and he asked himself, if I continue letting them grow, they might one day partner with our enemies and they could defeat and win over Egypt. And so he sent out a decree to all of Egypt and said, all baby boys of Israel should be killed. Now Moses was born to a poor Israel, Israelite family and to save him, his mother put him in a basket and then sent the basket out to the river. Guess who found the basket? Pharaoh's daughter found the basket with little Moses in it. And so Moses grew up in the palace and was a prince of Egypt. Now when Moses had grown up, he one day saw an Egyptian guard kill an Israelite slave. And he was so sad and he was so hard because he knew that the Israelite slave was part of his people. So he killed the Egyptian guard. Now, when people found out that Moses had killed an Egyptian guard, Moses ran away because he knew that if they found out, he would be killed. And so for 40 years, Moses lived in the wilderness, tending to sheep and goat and cattle. Now let's come to our story. And our story comes from the Bible, from the book of Exodus chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, your notebook and your pen, bring them out and let's read along the story. And so here we see that Moses is tending his sheep. And as he's tending his sheep, he sees a burning bush. But the burning bush was so strange because he could see it burning, but it was not getting burnt. And so he moved closer to look at it. And when he moved closer, suddenly God called to him, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. And Moses was afraid to look at God. So he turned his face away. And God said, that's enough. Remove your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. And Moses did that. And so Moses was not only afraid to see God. He was afraid when God told him that he would send him to Pharaoh to let him, to tell him to let go of the people of Israel. And Moses was so afraid and he asked God, but God, who am I? Who will I tell the people has sent me? And God said, tell them I am who I am has sent you. Tell them that I am has sent you to go and talk to Pharaoh. Moses was afraid. Now the word I am in Hebrew is Yahweh. Yahweh means he is. And so when God is referring to himself, he says, I am. But when the people of God are referring to God, they say he is. And so God showed Moses all the wonders that he would perform through him, all the miracles he would perform so that Pharaoh would let his people go. Moses was afraid, but he believed and he obeyed all he was told to do. And so we see that God is I am. He is I am and he is not I was. Moses realized that God deserved respect. And so he removed his shoes when he went near him. And so even when we invite God into our space, we know that God deserves respect and honor. And so we treat him in that way. And so today I want us to learn our memory verse. And our memory verse comes from the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 14a. That's Exodus chapter 3 verse 14a. And it says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. I'm going to repeat it. God said to Moses, I am who I am. That's Exodus chapter 3 verse 14a. 
And so we have learned other names of God. And so I want us to look at the other names of God that we have learned. And as I say them, I want you to think of the name that means a lot to you, the name that resonates with you as I say them. So I'll start with the Lord my shepherd from Psalm number 23, that God leads me and cares for me. And there's the Lord my healer from Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And this means that God can heal all of me. The Lord my righteousness from Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6. God makes me clean and right with him. The Lord my provider from Genesis chapter 22 verse 14. That God provides what I need. The Lord my peace from Judges chapter 6 verse 24. That God is my peace. And so I'm going to read them again. And as I read them, when I mention the one that is close to you, I want you to pray to God and ask him to be that. And so, the Lord, my shepherd, the Lord, my healer, the Lord, my righteousness, the Lord, my provider, and the Lord, my peace. And so as we come to the end of the lesson, I want to leave you with a blessing. May you know God who is the I am, the one who is present with you. He is tender and kind with you. He is slow to anger. May he fill your heart with his unending love. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you've, you've learned a lot about God's name. And I want you to remember the crafts that we have. You can find these crafts in our Nairobi Chapel website. And we have the craft for this week being God is the great I am. And so in our craft, we have a discipleship time that you can have with your family. And we also have our memory verse written in the craft. So this is the Sifa craft that also, that is for the six to seven year olds. And it has a devotion for each day of the week behind. We also have a craft for Shangwe and Jasiri, which is the craft for the 8 to 11 year old. And so it also has a discipleship time and a memory verse time. We also have a devotional guide for all the children between the age of 8 and 11. And you can find all of these crafts in our Nairobi Chapel website. I hope you learned quite a bit today. Thank you for joining me. And bye. That was an amazing lesson from Pastor Alfreda and Pastor Kerigo. I really hope that you've learned something new and that you're going to share it with your friends. So for now, what we're going to do, we're going to pray together because the Bible tells us that we can talk to God anytime and we can talk to him about anything. For today's prayer, we shall have it um, from three different children, just like you. We shall have the first prayer from Eli. We shall have the second prayer from Zidi. And we shall have the last prayer from Tinashi. Let's pray together. Hi, my name is Eli. So let's thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of food. Please protect us during this hard time. And please heal the people in the hospital. And please help the people that help the, the people in the hospital. Please make our leaders have nice have nice choices. Please make us healthy during this hard time in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, thank you for Kenya. Can you please prevent other people from dying from the virus? And we thank you for our life. We thank you for this wonderful world you have given us. We just want you to 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 protect us. In dear in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you also heal those who have COVID-19, also protect them and guide them, and also those doctors who are treating them, 
in different parts of the world please may you guide them in the right way and help them to heal them and also those who have relatives please comfort them and also make their hearts at peace and make them be healed in just name we pray amen dear father thank you for our mummies that we play with them hide and seek and other things in jesus name we pray amen Hi, my name is Steve G, and today we are here to discuss a topic on leaving a lasting legacy. A question I'd like to ask us as, as parents today is, what legacy are you going to leave for your children beyond this situation? What stories will your children have about their family and about their parents and things you're able to do together? What legacy will you intentionally build as a family? We're hanging out as a family and one of our uncles came out with a maize cob. A cob that he tells us was from his father's farm about 30, 40 years ago. And the interesting thing is, from this one maize cob, yeah, we were able to plant a few maize plants. And the harvest has been taken by, to the next generation. I've watched my children get excited because here they are seeing something that has come from their great-grandfather went to their grandmother and has been passed to us as a generation. And that is, this is what legacies are about. So for us as parents, as we go through this COVID situation and beyond, one of the challenges we are having is when our children sit down and tell their stories beyond this, will they be telling stories of exciting things they did as a family? Will they be telling stories of their father and what they were able to do together? Will they be telling stories of their mother and what they were able to engage over and above the realities of the situation. So how do you create a legacy? What we've done as a family is we sat down and used our family name as an acronym. And we set out each of those letters to be characters and values that we want to bring out in our children in the years to come. And for each of these characters and values, what we are doing is deliberately and intentionally creating opportunities and experiences for our children. For example, um, my name is Gashero, and for G, we want our children to learn to be graceful. And what we've asked ourselves as a family is, what are the things that we can intentionally bring around our children that they learn what grace means? That they learn to share of their time, of their resources, of their experiences with their friends out and about in everyday life. When we sit down and pray and ask God for patience, what does he do? Instead of giving us patience, he goes out and creates a lot of experiences and opportunities for us to test out and bring patience as a value. So for us as a family, the first thing we've, we did is we picked our acronym and for each of those letters, we, we brought it out as a character and a value. And every day, we are looking for experiences and stories that the children can tell that bring out our family name. And then secondly, when you say you are leaving a legacy, the question for you would be, when all this is over, will the children be able to say that they know you as their parents any better? Will they have spent time with you? Will they have spent uh, conversations with you? Will they have got to see a different side that they've never seen just because we are locked up? It has been said that beyond COVID, two, three, four, ten years from now, as adults will be looking back and will be telling stories of the lockdown and the stresses it brought. The children might be telling a different story. Stories of things they were able to do together as a family. Stories of being able to see you as their father, to see you as their mother. In everyday life, things that they haven't been able to do in the, in the recent past. So as we build your legacy, the question is, are you intentional about it? And what will you do as a family going forward? Thank you.
Oh, Mommy. This is your day. We cannot thank you enough for everything you do. You change our diapers, you believe in us, and you care for us. You feed us, and you care for, for us when we're sick. You're always there for us when we need you the most. But most of all, you love us for who we are. Even when we're cheeky. <laughs> you have shown us what it means to love God. So today, we celebrate you. And we want you to know how thankful we are. We love you. Happy Mother's Day.